Grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Archbishop Thomas Henry. I'm the President Primus of the Congress of Apostles and Bishops, affectionately known as COAB. One of the things we do at COAB is that we give you a correct historical and and even even if it's and biblical understanding of the various vestments and garments that we have that we wear from time to time. One of the things that you see that I have on today is a purple tab shirt. The unique thing about this particular tab shirt, even though it's purple, it has a Roman collar. You notice the tab its opening is square. It is square because it's the Roman collar. If this was this opening was rectangular, it would be the Anglican collar. What we call the full neckband collar is a uh, an upside down collar that was invented by a Scottish Presbyterian minister in the 1800s. And he turned the stiff collar upside down and voila, the dog collar, commonly called a clerical collar, a pontiff collar, was born. When Rome adopted the clerical collar, because Rome mostly had priests and cassocks, and they started wearing the shirts. They adopted the black shirts and they adopted the square shape opening, reminiscence of the square shape opening of the cassock. Anglican cassocks has, have a rectangular opening. And so Anglican cassocks are usually black or purple. And so they, Anglican bishops, adopted a purple shirt. Not because of law, but because of convention. Their cassocks are purple. They adopted a purple shirt. And so the purple shirt had a rectangular opening, thereby becoming known as the Anglican collar because the rectangular opening on their shirt mimic the rectangular opening on the cassocks. Now, one last thing. I told you where the collar origin is told you about this tab collar, but the full neck band, commonly, some people call it in the era the Roman collar. It is not the Roman collar. It is correctly identified as a clerical collar, dog collar, or pontiff collar. Now, it comes in three sizes, usually three sizes, sometimes four, but those three sizes are not indicative of a person's office. They are indicative of a person's education. Can I say it again? Those collars are not indicative of a person's office. They are indicative of a person's education. You wear a pontiff one if you have a bachelor's degree. You wear a pontiff two if you have a master's degree. You wear a pontiff three if you, wear a do if you have a doctorate degree. And some people do pontiff four, which is extension of pontiff three. That's it. Usually, one more point, one reason why you see bishops you in the old days before Protestant, well, those outside of the ancient traditions in the Anglican church started adopting these collars because Pentecostals actually started adopting the clerical collars after David Duplessis and a few of them met John Paul. Uh, not John Paul, excuse me, Paul VI. After they met Paul VI, Paul VI gave them a purple stole. And... Uh, uh, many Pentecostals began to start wearing a purple shirt that mimicked the color of the purple stole that was given by Pope Paul VI to David de Plessy and the rest of those brethren. And then you start seeing a lot of other Pentecostals uh, start wearing um, those colors. Kojic, uh, through the age of some other people, adopted an Anglican paradigm. Some people adopted a Roman structure. But what people didn't realize is that Anglicans and Romans are not the only one that have clerical vestments. You have Lutherans, you have the Orthodox, and you have the Church of the East, you have the Coptics, uh, and a few other churches who have unique vestments unto themselves. Marianites, uh, Melkites, and what have you. But anyways, that's all I want to talk about. Uh, the clerical collar, I'm not going to get into the other nuances, but I just want to let you know that your collar, what it is, where it came from, in a story, grace and peace.